start with the this is the first device electro absorption modulators or quantum well modulators. So, before I start I will briefly discuss the answer for the quiz yesterday's quiz. So, this was the quiz a particular semiconductor laser amplifier with indium gallium arsenide phosphide active medium of E g equal to 1.24 E v has a peak gain coefficient of 75 centimeter inverse and amplification bandwidth of 100 nanometer. Making use of the above data draw qualitatively the variation of gain coefficient with wavelengths in the amplification band. As I keep on repeating quiz is a simple question you should think simple and a little quick. The answer is very simple uh, most of you have a uh, right to see complicated uh, answer in that. So, the answer is here the fact that E g was given 1.24 E v should have been a hint to you that it will give lambda equal to 1 micron because lambda equal to 1.24 by E g in electron volts. So, lambda is 1 micron delta lambda is given 100 nanometer gamma p is given and an important point that we all know is if frequency is increasing in this direction then wavelength will be decreasing in this direction energy is increasing means wavelength is decreasing. So, that is all the points to be used and you have a similar variation in frequency h nu starting from E g here, but this time it starts from the opposite end because high energy is to this end and that is all. No need to remember any formulae, apply any formulae, apply any variations because it is a quiz. Okay. I have already corrected, uh, but I forgot to bring it. electro absorption modulators. These are also called quantum well modulators. quantum well modulators. These work on the principle of quantum confined Stark effect, quantum confined Stark effect. Quantum confined Stark effect. We know what is Stark effect. Stark effect refers to shift in the absorption spectrum. Originally, this was originally observed in the spectrum of hydrogen atom, absorption spectrum of hydrogen atom by Stark absorption spectrum of hydrogen atom absorption spectrum of hydrogen atom shift in the absorption lines of hydrogen atom in the presence of an applied electric field that was Stark effect. We are looking at quantum confined Stark effect. So, quantum here referring to the quantum well. So, we are looking at Stark effect in a quantum well structure Stark effect in a semiconductor quantum well structure and that is quantum confined Stark effect Q c s c and this Q c s c quantum confined Stark effect is made use of to realize quantum well modulators or electro absorption modulators. So, let us see first absorption in semiconductors we know the absorption spectrum in semiconductors as well as in quantum well structures we have seen this in the last classes. So, let me quickly recall what we have seen the absorption spectrum in quantum well structure. H nu and alpha 
attenuation coefficient centimeter inwards alpha in a bulk semiconductor the attenuation varies something like this. So, this starts from E g for bulk a quick recap bulk semiconductor and if you use a quantum bell structure it starts a little later we have already seen and then I had drawn this is at room temperature and we mentioned that these peaks are corresponding to excitonic peaks. So, this is at room temperature say 300 K at room temperature. If you measure this at lower temperature, if you measure the absorption spectrum at a lower temperature, what you would see is so, let me draw this with the dotted lines. Say, let us say this is at 100 K. So, two things that we observe one is the absorption edge is shifted this is called the absorption edge absorption edge is the energy or wavelength at which the absorption suddenly changes rapidly that is the absorption edge absorption edge. So, absorption edge is shifted to higher energies and the second thing that you observe is these peaks are more pronounced. this is in a quantum well structure. In a bulk semiconductor at room temperature we do not see any excitonic peaks. However, if a measurement is made at low temperature in fact, in the early 1960s there were low temperature absorption measurements in semiconductors and for example, if you take gallium arsenide H nu here. So, this is 1.42 eV at room temperature, so let us say 300 K. Then, if you measure at a lower temperature, so let me write this as 1.44, 1.46, 1.48, and 1.50, and so on. Then if you measure at a lower temperature, then you would see the absorption and if you lower the temperature further, so this is at 300 K, this let us say 186 K and this is at 26 K. The numbers here 10 to the power of 4, 10 power 3, 10 power 2, 10 centimeter inverse alpha in centimeter inverse. So, this is for gallium R several people measured this that in the early 60s. So, what you observe is at room temperature the absorption coefficient does not see show any peaks, but if you lower the temperature there are excitonic resonance peaks here and the peak becomes sharper if you go to lower temperature. This is because excitons which recall which correspond to a electrostatically bound electron hole pair close to the band edge where kinetic energy is minimum. The binding energy of these excitons binding energy 
at room temperature is of the order of 4 to 5 MeV. Binding energy is of the order of 4 to 5 MeV that is 0 0.004 electron volts, milli electron volts MeV. So, the binding energy in, in most semiconductors the binding energy is 2 to 10 MeV excitons at room temperature. Some wide band gap semiconductors like gallium nitride has a much higher uh, excitonic uh, binding energy about 25 MeV or so, but most of the semiconductors which are in this range we have 2 to 10 MeV. Gallium arsenide has about 4 to 5 MeV as the binding energy and as I discussed earlier that at room temperature the average kinetic energy thermal energy is of the order of 25 MeV. So, the thermal energy if due to the large thermal energy in the lattice these are immediately dissociated ionized they no more hold together and they are ionized. So, excitons do not exist at room temperature or they form and immediately dissociate. So, you do not see any resonance peaks, but if you lower the temperature if you lower the temperature then the thermal energy K T reduces and therefore, the binding energy becomes comparable and then you start seeing resonance peaks in the absorption and if you lower further you can clearly see resonance peaks. So, these are bulk this is not quantum well this is bulk gallium arsenide bulk gallium arsenide. In fact, this is these are very important proofs for the existence of excitons very clearly experimentally you can see excitons existence of excitons in semiconductors. In the case of one other thing what we observe is these and what about the shift the band edge is also shifting with temperature this is because of temperature dependent band gap E g is temperature dependent for semiconductors E g is a function of temperature. Generally, E g is higher at lower temperature. For example, in gallium arsenide if you go to 26 k or 27 k it is about 1.5 is the band gap in E v. So, E g is temperature. So, this shift in bulk is because of change in band gap energy. So, the same thing you observe here that it is shifting to higher energies because band gap is increasing as you lower the temperature. So, it shifts to higher energies. The second thing that you see is the peak sharpens. In the case of quantum well structures you already have a small peak even at room temperature. This is because of quantum confinement which leads to higher binding energy of excitons. The excitons have a higher binding energy generally about 3 to 4 times that of bulk because of quantum confinement. So, recall so, what is this quantum confinement? Let me take two states here. So, this is E 2 e, so this is E E 2 or E q equal to 1 q equal to 1 and E q equal to 2 in the conduction band. So, this is the conduction band and this is the valence band this is E dash. So, E dash q equal to 1 and E dash q equal to 2 in the valence band. The question is is band gap energy increasing that is what I said band gap energy is increasing as you lower the temperature for semiconductor. So, please see this we have I have considered a quantum well with two levels. In the case of valence band if you recall I had mentioned that there are light holes and heavy holes. So, there are heavy holes and light holes. So, this is 
the band corresponding to light hole and this is the band corresponding to heavy hole in the case of valence band. They can be degenerate or they need not be degenerate. So, if they are not degenerate at k equal to 0, which means if this light hole band which is the case in normally in quantum well structures, if it remains like this, so this is the light hole band, then you can see although k is 0, they are degenerate here. So, this is E k diagram. So, k versus E, then the energy corresponding to light hole here is different. Therefore, actually I have to show, I am showing this by dashed line the light hole bands. So, there these are these correspond to energy sub bands we have done in the last class energy sub bands like this. So, for every level correspondingly there is energy sub band in quantum wells. So, here also corresponding to this there is an energy sub band. So, we have a light hole band and corresponding to this we have so this is what I have drawn. So, forget about this, this is for bulk. In a quantum well structure, we have energy sub bands. This is what we discussed in the last class. Corresponding to each q value, that is 1 q equal to 1 determines the k z value, but k x and k y are continuously varying, almost continuously varying, and therefore, we have energy sub bands, formation of energy sub bands. So, corresponding to each energy level here, there is a sub band formed because this is the transverse k t that is square root of k x square plus k y square. Corresponding to heavy hole and light hole there are two sub bands here and this is although k equal to 0 here there are two sub bands and that is why I have shown like this. The allowed transitions are this one is an allowed transition and this is also an allowed transition. Similarly, the allowed transitions here that is delta q equal to 0 is an allowed transition. This is a allowed transition and this is also an allowed transition. This is the same energy value q equal to 1, but there are light hole and heavy hole bands. So, the dash line here corresponds to light hole band what I have shown here and q equal to 2 to q equal to 1? Yes, no. The question is whether q equal to 2 to q equal to 1 is valid allowed or not. This is not allowed. Quantum mechanically you can find out what are the allowed transitions and delta q equal to 0, which means q equal to 1 here must have q equal to 1 here. So, that is why these what I have shown are allowed transitions. Please remember allowed transition does not mean a transition from here to here will not take place. The probability is very low. Allowed transition means probability is high, but forbidden transitions can take place, but with low probability. So, corresponding to this exciton formed from the heavy hole to this, we have the first peak. Please see here, the energy difference from this to this is the first peak here in the quantum well. The second small peak that you see is from the light hole to this band. So, q equal to 1, but one is light hole and other is heavy hole. That is why you see two peaks here, exitonic peaks, two peaks. And corresponding to this, the second step here, the second step is, so this step is because of absorption here. And the second step that we have is because of absorption here, from here to here. And there also you see two peaks, this is because of light hole and heavy hole. So, in the further discussions, I will not bring in light hole and heavy hole because it is also possible to have only one, it is also possible to have only one peak by using strained layer quantum wells, it is possible to merge these, so that these are degenerate 
and you will be left with just one peak here. So, it is possible and therefore, in future uh, discussions I will not bring these two peaks, but the important point to note is there is a peak because of excitons, excitonic resonances that is absorptions taken, energy taken by the excitons, formation of excitons. That is why there is an excitonic peak. So, you have an excitonic peak and you can see excitons at room temperature in quantum well structures. This is because of quantum confinement. What is this quantum confinement? So, let me draw again the same structure because now I want to show wave functions. In the case of a quantum well structure, if I consider one level, just let me consider one energy level that is E q equal to 1 and E dash q equal to 1. This is for the holes and that is for, there is a, this is the lowest energy. Therefore, what I am plotting is the wave function associated with the electron here and the wave function associated with the hole. I can draw it upward or downward, it does not matter, it simply uh, indicates that there is a phase change of pi, otherwise you can also plot this the same way upward. So, what I have plotted is the wave function correspond, this is the whole wave function, whole state and this is the electron state, the wave function. The, even in the case of bulk, if you have an electron here and a hole here, there is an associated wave function, because it is like a packet and therefore, there is an associated wave function. But this wave function is not confined by any potential barrier. Therefore, slight energy supply, supply of slight energy will simply dissociate this, but in a quantum well structure, the wave function is confined by this potential energy barrier and this is called quantum confinement. There is no confinement here. It is just because of the Coulomb attractive potentials that they are holding on together with a weak binding energy. But in this case, there is a potential barrier which is confining the electron state here and the whole state here, which means please remember this axis is x at a given spatial position they are made to hold together and therefore, this is called quantum confinement. So, quantum confinement refers to this and this confinement leads to an additional binding energy and therefore, the binding energy of these is higher, binding energy of excitons is higher than the binding energy in bulk semiconductor. So, this is typically the binding energy is typically four times, three to four times that of bulk, which means if I take gallium arsenide, which has a binding energy of about 4 MeV, then in quantum well structure, it will have a binding energy of 15 to 20 MeV, typically 15 to 20 MeV. Now, the, that binding energy is higher, although it is comparable, it is higher, therefore, the they do not dissociate so quickly and therefore, you see these at room temperature. The second peak as I already said, it is due to light hole band. So, please focus on one of, one of the peaks and this peak appearing at room temperature is because of the increased binding energy due to quantum confinement. Now, we will see what is quantum confined. So, Stark effect refers to the shift in absorption peaks or absorption lines and red shift of the absorption edge in quantum well structures is called the quantum confinement, quantum confined Stark effect. So, let me illustrate it and then it will become clear. At a given temperature, this shift is because of change in temperature. Now, we will see a similar shift will be there because of an applied electric field and that is called quantum confined star case. So, let me erase and uh, rub this and uh, draw a fresh figure for the absorption spectrum of 
a quantum well structure. So, this time I will focus only on the first step. Similar step is there the second step, but I will focus on the first step. H nu here and in a quantum well structure, therefore, absorption peak and I am focusing only on a single peak. The second step is there, I am not concerned about that. So, if this is gallium arsenide, 1.42 is here and the step starts a little later, say 1.44 E v, this is H nu in E v. I am taking gallium arsenide because that is the one which is widely studied and also we can put some numbers. So, numbers will give you a better feel how much it is shifting. So, that is why I am taking gallium arsenide. So, this is alpha and the numbers here are typically 10 power 3, 10 power 4. So, 10 power 3, 10 power 4 alpha in centimeter inwards. This is at a particular temperature. So, T equal to all T is equal to 300 K room temperature and no electric field applied. What happens if you apply an electric field? First, if you take a semiconductor, a piece of semiconductor, and apply an electric field. A piece of semiconductor has an energy band diagram like E v, E c and E g. If you are putting x equal to 0 at a, this end and x equal to L at this end, then this is x. We apply an electric field. It is not a p n junction, it is just a piece of semiconductor. So, what will happen to the band diagram? If you apply an electric field, what will happen to this band diagram? This end is at a positive potential, which means electron potential energy is lower. Please remember this is E and therefore, the band bends. So, the energy band diagram bends like this. The gap is the same E g, there is no change in energy gap. So, this is in the presence of an electric field which is like positive to negative, this is positive and this. So, this is the E field, the electric field, applied electric field and the band bends this fashion. In this case, if you have an energy, a photon of energy E g equal to H nu, H nu equal to E g or more, an electron sitting close to the band edge can make an upward transition and come here. E g equal to H nu or E g is slightly greater than H nu, this can come here. And that is why we know that the absorption for this semiconductor, if I plot the absorption, let me plot it here, it starts from E g and goes like this. So, H nu E g alpha for a bulk semiconductor absorption starts at E g because of this reason. What will happen to this? Please let me illustrate a little bit. If I increase the electric field, this will tilt more. If I increase the electric field, let me draw here, it will tilt more and let us say I have a semiconductor with band gap E g, but this is now tilted. What is this? These are all, this is the valence band and this is the conduction band, bands which have allowed states. An electron at a particular value of x, let us say x equal to x 0, x equal to x 0, this end is x equal to 0, this end is x equal to l at x equal to x 0, there is an electron which is sitting here. This cannot go to this band because there are no allowed states, but an electron which is sitting here, an electron which is sitting here, please see here. If I put the, this axis is energy E. If I draw a horizontal line, there is a state here which has the same energy here. Please see an electron in the valence band here 
has energy E is equal to E 1. An electron allowed state in the conduction band also has an energy E equal to E 1. Therefore, in principle the electron can exist here or here or the electron which is sitting here can tunnel from here to this state because it is at the same energy state this quantum mechanical tunneling okay recall what we know quantum mechanical tunneling if you have an electron state here which has a wave function here this is the basic quantum mechanic this is v the potential and this is x v of x those of you are not familiar this is elementary quantum mechanic this is an allowed state inside the well bound state inside the well but here also you can have energy so this is the first state e1 you can also have energy here the same energy is possible in this region because the potential is lower if you want you can make another well here this is the identical well which we have talked about and then there is an allowed value here also and therefore the two wave functions can interact the directional coupler in fiber optic the two wave functions can interact which means if I have a wave function here it can interact with this and energy can get transferred to that or if I did not have this then what it means is if at this value of E E 1 states are permitted in this region and therefore this electron the evanescent wave tail comes here but because here it is an allowed state it starts oscillating and electron can tunnel from here to this the tunneling coefficient or the probability that the electron can go from here to here depends on the width this width of the barrier this is the barrier it is seeing this potential barrier I need not have a well I can also have simply a barrier step and I can have an electron which is incident like this this is a barrier potential energy barrier what is the probability for this electron to go to the other side classically it cannot go but quantum mechanically it can go to the other side it can tunnel through the barrier the tunneling probability depends on the width of the barrier and the height of the barrier the probability of tunneling depends on the width width of the barrier and height of the barrier I come back this much elementary concept is sufficient we cannot go into too much of quantum mechanics here the point is the same a electron allowed state is here an allowed state is here there is a barrier in between there is nothing no allowed states there like here barrier inside the barrier there are no allowed states so there is a barrier and a separation delta x a separation so this electron can in principle tunnel here but the tunneling probability will depend on the separation between them so if I make it more steeper or for example if I have a semiconductor which has a small band gap and more steeper more steeper means I have applied a stronger electric field then this electron will have a probability go to, to go to here which is much better because the difference is small the barrier width is small so this is the barrier width this is quantum mechanical tunnel in the case of a semiconductor we can also have photon assisted tunneling photon assisted tunneling photon assisted tunneling photon assisted tunnel what is this photon assisted tunnel an electron which is sitting here let me remove this eg so that the picture is clear there is a photon which is incident which has energy eg less h nu less than e it is able to lift only up to this 
it is not possible that you can it can absorb normally it is not possible but if it is able to lift up to this height please see at this energy if i go here there is an allowed state here and therefore this electron which is sitting at the band edge here can make a transition to this state through photon assisted tunneling the photon in the energy space please see this is energy axis this is not physical height this energy axis in energy the electron gains energy from photon and lifts it up to this energy from where it can tunnel to this state and this difference if it is very small the tunneling probability is very high this is called photon assisted tunneling photon assisted tunnel. this gap here is made up by tunneling because photon could lift it up to this at the same energy we have a vacant state so this electron essentially goes like this but with the help of photon assisted tunneling in an earlier classes we have discussed about phonon assisted transitions so it is like photon assisted transition and this is this means this energy h nu here h nu 0 h nu 0 is less than eg this means there is a probability of absorption of photons with energy less than the band gap and what would happen to the absorption spectrum of my this bulk this will now shift here the absorption spectrum this is with e equal to 0 the electric field e equal to 0 and this is with electric field finite electric field and this famous experiment was done by Franz and Kildish and is known as the Franz Kildish effect. Franz Kildish. This was discovered in 1958. Franz Kildish, a German scientist, Franz, and a Russian scientist, Kildish, discovered this effect that in the presence of an applied electric field, the absorption edge shifts to lower energy or higher wavelength lower energy or higher wavelength so it is called redshift of the absorption edge franz kildish effect redshift of the absorption edge in semiconductors it is explained by the phenomena of photon assisted tunnel photon assisted tunnel why did i discuss this shifting of red shifting of the absorption edge in bulk semiconductor is called Franz Kildish effect. If you apply an electric field to quantum well structure, you will see a similar shift to this side. So, red shifting of the absorption edge red shifting of the red shifting means shifting to lower energy shifting to higher wavelength so red shifting of the absorption edge in a quantum well structure is called qc quantum confined stuff this is with e is equal to 0 and this is with e of the order of typical numbers are 50 kilo volt per centimeter. The electric field applied is typical. This happens with the typical electric field of the order of 100 kilo volt per centimeter. You need a little higher uh, electric field 100 kilo volt per centimeter. This happens with the 20 kilo volt per centimeter, 30 kilo volt per centimeter. 
it is not a very big electric field we will see because it is per centimeter dimension will be very small. So, first the definition of quantum confined star effect is the red shift of the absorption edge of a quantum well structure is called quantum confined star effect. It is quantum confined because this step like variation with an excitonic peak is because of quantum confinement and it is stark effect because the shift is because of an applied electric field. So, quantum confined stark effect this is Franz Kildish effect. So, basically it is Franz Kildish effect, but in a quantum well structure. we will come to the modulator you would wonder where is the modulator the modulator will come shortly so what is happening i draw this again the quantum well structure quantum confined stark effect we have the electric the wave function of the electron wave function of the hole here. This is without the electric field. What will happen to this if I apply the electric field? The band will start bending and what you get here is this is E equal to 0 and E is equal to let us say 50 kilo volt per centimeter. The energy here this energy goes down because of the band bending. So, and this energy comes up the area under the curves are the same, but just that what has happened is if I call this as some energy delta E 1, then this difference now is smaller delta E 2, then delta E 2 is less than delta E 1. Because of the applied electric field, there is a small displacement also. Oh, I should have shown that also. The electron wave function becomes asymmetric. Why do you think electron wave function becomes asymmetric? Because remember, I have applied a positive voltage here. So, the electron is getting attracted towards the positive voltage. So, it is trying to go that side. If I had taken a simple bulk semiconductor, the electron will immediately rush to that end. That is why the it will dissociate immediately. Here it is trying to go, but the barrier is stopping it from going. The wave functions have separated out here in space at any given value of x. You see the peak of this is at the same position as peak of this. But here the peak of this is here and the peak of this is here. The wave function is trying to separate out because this is getting attracted toward this end, this is. But what is important is the SF. change in energy, difference in the effective band gap. This is the effective band gap E g q 1 and this is E g q 1 bar, but now E g q 1 is smaller, which means photons of lower energy can be absorbed. 
which means the band edge is shifting to lower energy. So, this is the red, this is after applying electric field, red shift of red shift of the band edge because of quantum confinement the electron fields are still held together and therefore, the if there is a if there is a exciton formed the exciton is still there exciton has not gone exciton is still holding together because of quantum confinement. If there was no quantum confinement the exciton will be immediately torn apart dissociated because of the applied electric field the electron will travel this end hole will travel this end. So, there will be no more exciton in a bulk semiconductor even at lower temperature, but in the case of quantum well structure the electron wants to go, but the barrier is stopping it. Hence, quantum confined Stark effect. It is because of quantum confinement, the excitonic peaks still remain. Where is the modulator? We will discuss more uh, details of the modulator later, but you imagine that okay, this is in terms of energy. If I were to plot this in terms of wavelength, how would it look? So, it would So, this is shifting which one is with E equal to 0 and which one is with E greater than 0. So, what is on the right side is E greater than 0 because it is red shift please see now this is I am plotting with wavelength lambda, lambda versus alpha. So, this is with E and this one is with E equal to 0. So, I should actually show this as a higher peak because the peak goes down a little bit. Now, very quickly where is the quantum uh, well modulator? Suppose, so there are two wavelengths here. Let us say this edge was at lambda 1 and this edge is at lambda 2. If I put a wavelength which corresponds to this, I am showing here lambda operating, lambda operating. If I launch a wavelength through this structure, quantum well structure, we will discuss about the uh, device in, in a next class. This is the quantum well structure and I am putting wavelength beam of wavelength lambda op. How to apply the field, what is the device configuration we will discuss, but very quickly I am applying this wavelength is passing through the device. Lambda O p is here. When there is no electric field, what is the attenuation coefficient? Almost nil. This is this axis is attenuation coefficient. So, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, 10 power 3, 10 power 4. So, at this wavelength, this is the loss curve. So, lambda O p which is just greater than lambda 2, there is no loss. This medium is transparent. When I apply the electric field, this curve has shifted here. So, what has happened at this wavelength? You see, the loss is 10 to the power of 4. Attenuation coefficient here for this curve, when electric field was not there, we will discuss again, but when the electric field was not there, lambda operating this medium was transparent. So, complete transmission. When I applied the electric field, the loss curve shifted here which means alpha has increased by orders of magnitude because now the second curve is applicable not the first curve because I applied electric field. So, this is the curve which is applicable and this wavelength corresponds to the peak here. So, the attenuation coefficient is very high which means this will absorb it nothing will come out. So, what is the point if I see the transition if I see the transmission T versus time, if I apply an electric field pulse like this, this is E field, an electric pulse in time, then the transmission which was full 100 percent here originally, when the electric field comes, the transmission will go down like this. 
this is optical transmission, this is applied electric field, an electric pulse applied to the device, the transmission has gone down like this. This is modulation, modulation is modulation of intensity, the intensity which has been modulated and this response in an electro optic modulator, electro absorption modulator is very, very small time of the order of 10 to 20 picoseconds. So, you can really have electro absorption modulators at 40 gigahertz, 50 gigahertz and so on. We will discuss the device configuration in the next class. We will stop here and uh, discuss the device configuration later. So, this is the principle how the quantum confined Stark effect can be used to realize electro absorption modulator.